Rhythm is one of the three pillar elements of music, but one of the least talked about when it comes to improvisation. In this video, you'll get three different tips to work on your rhythm at three different ability levels. Hi, my name is Jason Klobnik, and I'm a jazz trumpeter from Denver, Colorado that helps musicians find a better way to improvise. If you're looking for a quick jazz improv tip that will help your soloing, then you've come to the right place. Melody, harmony, and rhythm, the three essential pillars of music. Unfortunately, the one that gets the least amount of love and is arguably the most important of the three is rhythm. It's also the weakest area for most students. So today's video is going to give you three quick suggestions of things to work on to help out your rhythm. The first is for beginners and is using a concept called rhythmic solfege. If you're familiar with traditional solfege, where you add syllables to pitches, like do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, it adds a type of syllable or short word to a rhythmic value. Anything that lasts longer than a quarter note is assigned the syllable do or da. Quarter notes can be assigned do, da, or dot, depending on the accent. Eighth notes and sixteenths will also have do or da, with the off beats getting the da syllable. The secret in this sauce is the elongated vowel sound. It helps with rhythm and articulation. Here's an example of a common short rhythmic phrase a beginner might encounter. Most beginners that haven't been exposed to the sound of swing might play it like this. After applying the proper rhythmic solfege, it would sound like da do da. Speak it out with the beginner, then have them play it like they just imitated with the syllables. If you're interested in more on this subject, I wrote a blog post about this back in 2012 that you can check out. There's a link to that post in the description below. The next tip is for intermediates, and that's starting to think of using targeting concepts with rhythm specifically by anticipating the target by an eighth note before it happens. This works beautifully because swing has such a strong feeling of forward motion that the anticipation feels right. Let's take this example. Three straight eighth notes anticipating the chord change in the next measure. If you make the and of four your target, the target almost sounds like it's happening on beat one. The beauty of swing is how forward everything keeps pushing, and by anticipating your targets, you keep that sense of forward motion. Here's another example of starting the line earlier in the measure, but using the forward motion rhythmic concept to make the target on the end of four. Finally, let's talk about something a little more complex, rhythmic quoting. Last week's video looked at short, familiar melodic fragments. Rhythmic quoting expands the concept and uses just the rhythm of something else. It's not going to be recognizable to every listener, but it really helps break up the monotony of playing the same rhythmic ideas over and over. I got this concept from interviews of Dizzy Gillespie talking about filling his mind with rhythm while soloing. What rhythms work with this? I like to use ideas from other standards or melodies that have blends of syncopation and non-syncopation. Here's one I talk about in my book, Breaking the Monotony. It's the rhythm to the first couple measures to solar. Instead of just playing the rhythm, let me demonstrate this and some of the other concepts over the changes to Just Friends. After I play a chorus, why don't you try out some of the previous concepts too?
I hope you've enjoyed this video and that it has added value or benefit to your playing in some way. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and that bell that's right next to it that lets you know when another video comes out. And if you know any other musician that might find this useful, you can share it with them too. Until then, my name is Jason Klobnik, and I'll see you on the next one.